I think we're good. Okay, hi, welcome to my broadcast. Thanks for joining me. My name is Barry Selby. I'm running a bit later than usual. It's just been a very crazy day today and uh, at home base for this broadcast. So, if you haven't seen me before, I'll introduce myself. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, because this is a Facebook Live, it will end up being there. But if you're watching it on YouTube, you want you to see the comments that show when I do this live. Um, the Facebook Live version, you'll see the comments if you're interacting or if you're watching it in replay as well. So that's the logistics. Let's get to the content. I actually get to introduce myself and what this is about. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's topic actually came from a conversation with a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine. Oh, by the way, I should let you know. This is number 379. <laughs> in an ongoing series of talks, as in every day. So I'm going for 400 because that's the next next milestone and I already see the next one after that showing up. So that just to, to let your heads up. So today's topic is, um, it's going to be a bit messy in a way and a little bit of a cautionary tale as well. And so I'm calling it as a simple introduction. And again, it's number 379. Um, sorry, not sorry. Don't fall for it. And I'm using this description um, in the case of my friend so I'm not going to name your names because this is confidentiality but basically they were going through a problem they were going through a challenge she's going through a challenge because the guy that really screwed her up in a relationship is asking to apologize but she can feel it's not authentic thank god she sees the truth in it that he's actually just trying to get back to where he was which is not what she wants because he was abusive he was negative he was controlling he was Basically, he was a particular archetype that I'm not going to mention here, but he was the right piece of work. And he messed up her life and her daughter's, which is even more you know, concerning in a way. And so the apology that was put forward on the surface was like, that was very nice. It was beautiful. It was heartfelt and felt the, felt the, the caring was there. But dig a little deeper and seeing where he came from became very clear that was a, um, it was a cover-up. It was a disguised way to get back in the door and she saw it clearly which was good and in fact she asked for feedback to get clear about that and all the all the um sideline coaches were jumping in and saying yes absolutely this is not this is not true he's he's making the, he's basically feigning apology to get back to where he was and so i want to generalize it more for this conversation and speak to this from the point of view of people who have well People you know, certainly wasn't you, have stayed in a relationship way longer than you should have because the person who was hurting you kept apologizing. And so this whole thing of, um, it's funny, I was going to talk, the talk I was going to do today was, was love, and, love and pain. And it really plays into this broadcast because there are so many times I've seen in relationships with clients, and I'm just thinking if I've been through that myself. I don't think I have actually, so I've maybe, I may have dodged that bullet, where your partner is basically apologizing whilst they're still punishing you. They're apologizing whilst they're still wounding you. They're apologizing where they still hurt you because you let them in again. And the apology is a distraction. It's almost like um, a, magi a magic act where the same you look at the left hand whilst the right hand's doing the magic. Well, they're using the apology to disguise that they're still wounding you and hurting you, which is not appropriate. So there's a couple places I want to go with this. One of which is, if you're in the situation or you've been in the situation, how to not fall back into it again, how to not relapse, as it were, into that same old pattern that you swore you'd never go back into again. And I'm also going to come back to the thing about how can you discern accurately when someone's basically making stuff up to get, the, get, your, to get you back in the life again. So first of all, let me say this. If that person is attempting to get you back in their life again and using this leverage way of doing it, which is not appropriate, the plus side of this is you are pretty spectacular, the fact they're working that hard to get you back. I'm just saying that so you get that point. Because the, the reality is it's easier for them to go somewhere else if they didn't really care. But they're invested enough to want to come back to you. So that's power you have that you may not be aware of. Secondly, the well second second part, part b of this one is their desire to get back with you is because they are so um maybe they are really in love with you but so, such a distorted way of doing it that 
You want to own, own your own magnificence, your own love, your own amazement, because that's what is attracting them. Oh dear, <laughs> the challenge you face. But what you really want is a relationship that actually honors you at that place, doesn't try to drag you down from that place, because that's the difference. A relationship that's healthy and authentic will actually step up to honor you at the level you're at, and in fact, raise you up and raise them up at the same time, which is where you want to go, I think, if you're watching my broadcasts. Whereas if you're with somebody who's sucking from your energy, they want to pull you down from that place and make you feel weaker and less than. In the psychological descriptions, there's a term called gaslighting. And I actually, I actually talked about how um, certain members of the, of the government are attempting to gaslight the public, the American public. Gaslighting is a term that she, from actually a psychological breakdown. It actually comes from a movie back in the 40s called Gaslight. And it's the idea that somebody will manipulate somebody else so much that the person who's being, who's being manipulated will become um, disconnected from reality. And if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, that will happen. Or at least they will attempt to make that happen. Which means your view of the world will be so distorted you won't see truth or reality very clearly because you've been so hoodwinked, if you use the term, by this person. So if that's been happening to you on any level, and I don't mean it necessarily because of a classical um, psychological terminology, but if you've dealt with the fact where somebody works their way back into your life again, that you swore you never had them back in again, but they get back in anyway, because you let them on some level, and they end up hurting you again and again and again, the work to be done, sorry to say this, is in you. The transformation, the healing, the change has to happen in you because you're the one that can change your course. You're you're not, and I want to say this clearly, you're not a victim here. You may have chosen the victim role, not intentionally, of course, but accidentally or unconsciously. But the reality is you have freedom to choose. And if you choose not to be the victim, which is the reality anyway, then it behooves you to take the steps to actually undo that wiring that's got you attracted to that person in the first place. You know? Sorry, Cassandra, love you first. I take it you were talking, not, not loving me first. You were talking about loving yourself first. I think that's what you mean, but I appreciate the love anyway. But yes, it is love yourself first. So absolutely, I agree with you. Um, and that's a part of the work. There's, that's one part of the work. I want to give you another piece first and come back to this one. So thank you for pointing that one out, Cassandra. I appreciate that. In the work I do with my clients and what happens a lot of times is and this is stuff I've worked on myself and been through and journeyed through the teaching of how to do this, is that we are trained when we're very young. And I mentioned this in yesterday's broadcast day before, but I didn't go into it, so I just want to give me the chance to re-present that piece again. We get into love. <laughs> Thank you, Cassandra. I love you too. <laughs> I love you as well, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the dance that we have with relationships is built into us from a very young age. The people we attract, the partners we dance with, the way we interact in a relationship has actually been predestined from years before without us even realizing we did it. As an adult human being, we think we have autonomy over our... Sorry, I just noticed my phone just did something weird. Okay, still on, I think. Okay. Um, rewind that from a second. Yes, so our, our life is predestined in a way as a young age. As an adult, we think we have full volition. Let's speak towards that. Thank you. Thank you. As an adult, we think we have full volition of what we're doing, where we're going, and how we're going to be in a relationship and every area of life. Yet, we seem to have these default patterns and habits that show up that tend to um, detour our path somewhere else. In fact, put us somewhere off track where we'll end up doing something we didn't plan on doing, but we look back and go, I've done this before. I've been here before had the same experience before that's telling and it is something that happened before because it came from a very young age and I'm going to try and explain this a different way than I usually do because I want to make sure you get this because this is such a fundamental piece that people forget and don't know about and they go to see matchmakers and dating coaches and online dating sites and apps and swipe and, and hope they meet somebody and yet the end result is they keep meeting somebody who repeats the same cycle they went through before this is why I'm just, more, I'm just looking at how I want to come into it from not doing the same way. Because I, well, I can tell you the right way, the way I normally tell it, but I'm going to try and see if it have a different angle. Let me start with what I know and then see if it shows up a different way. As a young person, you are learning about the world around you. Now, you go to school and then you do math class and English class and geography and all these different classes and learn about the way the world is. 
But in the area of love and relationships, that's actually done more um, freeform. <laughs> in the sense that you don't actually learn it in school structure necessarily, but you learn by social interaction with your peers at school, with the teachers around you, and in particular with the ones you spend most of the time with, which is your parents. So as a young person, usually pre-teen, you will be noticing how the world works through the lens of what people around you do. So the adults around you are modeling for you how you think life should be as an adult. It makes common sense. We learn from those around us. It's the way, it's the way animals learn, frankly. I mean, it's the way, you know, puppies learn from the, from the adult dogs and kids learn from the cats and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, all the animal kingdom works that way too. And in some ways, we're no different. Yes, we may be human and have, you know, thumbs and everything else, but we learn behaviorally from the growing up adults around us. It's the way we learn. Whether it's intentional through school or accidental by the behavior. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. Because what happens is, and it's always key when you're a parent, is watch how you're teaching your children because what you're doing in front of them is teaching them. As a teacher in school, it's curriculum and you have books and you have tests, so it's very intentional and it's formatted and you know what's going on. But at home it's happening as well, but you may not know it. But it's happening at home anyway. So the way things work in younger lifestyle is you watch the way that the adults around you, usually your parents, maybe older siblings, the way they treat you and treat each other, you look at that and go, that's how life is. Now, this is not what you, that's not what you're thinking, but your little and mammalian brain in the back, down here somewhere, is going, hmm, that's the way life is. I better copy that when I'm older. And so you start filing away all these different ideas about how to be in a relationship with other people, how to connect, how to communicate, how to articulate. And it becomes an, a, a binder full of information, as it were, like a school book full of information stored away in your back of your subconscious. And it's safe there because your conscious mind comes online and puts a gate in front of it. And your subconscious mind is now locked away with all that information. Well, not locked away, but it's, just, it's secure with that information. And your conscious mind comes online. Um, Bruce Lipton in the Biology of Belief talks around the age of, age of seven or eight. It's, um, it's, there's a variety on that belief. I don't have facts on it. I just know what he said, and he's a biologist, so he knows his stuff. That we have this volition that shows up in our later preteen years. However, that subconscious programming, that book, that binder full of content in the back there, is still there. It doesn't change. It doesn't go away. Because, there's an, we, because, again, it is subconscious, so we don't notice it. It's in there anyway. So you as an adult are running your conscious mind, thinking you're going to have intentions for getting in a relationship, go dating, find somebody, be in love, and you'll be clear about it, and if they mess you up, you'll walk away, and it's all fine. Sounds good. However, your subconscious binder full of information comes out to play when you get into a relationship, especially because that's when the intimacy shows up. That subconscious, that subconscious content is stored away and is idle until intimacy happens, generally speaking, when things get closer, when you start to feel connection, feel love, feel needed, feel connected and feel wanting of that person, then all those subconscious programs start to just leak out, as it were. They permeate your consciousness without even knowing it. So if you saw things as a child that were um, manipulative, for example, where one person manipulated the other in front of you, or they tried to manipulate you, you would tend to find yourself in those situations where you either be manipulated or you will manipulate because that's the way you've got the wiring inside subconsciously that love and manipulation go together it's the way that you learnt it as a student of life every area sorry every um behavior that we have as an adult is generally preformed as a child so when you're in a relationship with somebody who throws their um narcissistic gaslighting behavior on top of you and you fall for it for whatever reason well, the reason being is that truthfully is you probably had somebody as a child that did something similar energetically to you or around you. Again, parent, teacher, peer, somebody in your childhood arena that showed you that and you believe that was the way it should be without realizing you did that. As an adult, that person does that to you and you don't know what to do because you're totally, you, you become um, a player in the game without control. You got pup, you're on strings as a puppy. You have no control over this. Until the one time where you get to the point and say, that's it, enough, I need to get out. And you finally form yourself out of that relationship. You extricate yourself carefully and it's challenging, I understand. That person then will then do this um, queerly apologizing, hoping to get you back. And because that wound is still inside of you, that original history is still inside of you, it'll keep happening again where you'll go, I'll give him a second chance. And I know some of you out there are going, oh, I remember this. Where you gave somebody a second chance in a relationship and the second time was no better than the first. If not, it may have been worse than the first time. And you're going, oh, crap, why did I fall for that? 
Well, don't blame yourself, first of all. Because what happened when you were a child is wired into you, is, is hardwired in a way into your subconscious. Not hard, well, not hardwired, but it's wired in in a way that runs automatically. And the more you keep reinforcing it, you'll keep happening until you change it. And that's the good news, by the way, you can change it. And self-love is part of that, getting back to Cassandra's comment earlier. So, as an adult, your relationships will go the way they go, but you'll notice that certain patterns show up repeatedly. Certain styles of relationship happen again and again for you. And one of those parts, which is start at the beginning with, one of the parts at the beginning, is that apology that gets you sucked back in again, is pulling you back into what's familiar and what is safe, even though you know it's not working for you. But what happens is you get fooled because your subconscious takes over again. So what to do? So two things, again, one of those I mentioned is the self-love piece, which is what Cassandra mentioned earlier, and that's a big part of the work, is because we as, ba- we as adults have a bad habit of thinking we've got to be perfect, and then we judge ourselves when we're not. And that is a painful way to live life. So loving yourself and accepting who you are is a powerful place to reinforce your trust in yourself. So that's a, big, that's a given right at the front. So we recommend that highly. The second piece, and this is the deeper work, and this is where my coaching comes in, so I'm just going to let you know that's where it is, but I'm going to tell you how it works, is whether it's with me or somebody else, getting someone's help to go back into your childhood to get the subconscious, that binder of content out, that subconscious programming um, out in front, once you can see it as, an, as a clear conscious viewing, so it's no longer invisible and no longer hidden, and then you can see what has actually been planted there and say, okay, is this really true? Do you really want this? And if not, how do you change it? And that's where the rewiring happens. Now, a couple of pieces. I, I do a lot of work with parts integration in my coaching, which I've, I learned a long time ago when I was in my grad school. And I love this piece because parts integration is the part where you understand that everything inside of you, no matter how aberrant it might feel, is working together for your good. Let me put a caveat in there. So these behaviors and programs of relationship are running automatically for your good. But why does it suck so much, you may be wondering? Because the intention is good, but the execution is screwed. <laughs> no, but it's, I'll say that again. The intention is good, it's clear, to have love, to be loved, whatever that is. But the execution of it is screwed up because of the wiring from when you were younger. So again, that behavior when you were younger, that you watched as, an, as a child and saw as being presented to you as the way love is expressed, becomes the wiring that runs automatically when you're an adult. And so the understanding of that, first of all, is the first step to healing. You know, awareness is the first step toward transformation. So once you know what's going on, you can change it. It's the lack of awareness that makes it hard to do because you don't even know what's going on. But having that awareness changes everything. And from there, with assistance, either from somebody you know who does this work, like myself, or from coaching other programs, different ways of doing it. I'm not saying mine's the only way. I happen to be biased thinking it's a really good way, but that's, that's me. Is that you become clear about what is running in your subconscious, you look at it and you change the wiring, and I'm using electronic terms, but it's in a way it does work that way, you change the wiring so that what is the intentions that you set that are actually being executed are now being executed in a way that is conducive and workable and in supportive of you and where you want to go. And yes, you can have that. You are not screwed up. You are not permanently damaged. You are not a failure. This is all the wiring you took in as a kid that isn't your true nature but it's the beliefs you put on when you were younger and the good news is it can be changed so if you're experiencing relationship relationship repetition of the same limiting upsetting painful patterns where the sorry not sorry shows up if that's happening for you this is an indicator this is good news because you're seeing it clearly and going hang on a second i don't want to do this anymore this is where you can change your life Now, this is true in every area, by the way. It's not just relationships, but every part of your life you learn from being modeled by the people around you as a kid. So social interaction is part of that too. Friendships, same thing. But relationships where I specialize, and it's really true where the most juices and the most most, um, transformation can happen because it changes from the inside out. So I think I've given you enough content to think about. You may be given too much, in fact. You might have been overloaded. So I hope this made some sense. But if you didn't understand what I was saying, please watch from the beginning because this... this, this is a big piece of the pie. And for a lot of people, it's like, whoa, that's massive. But I hope it does make sense to you. It's a, it's a big part of my work. And it's a passionate piece of the work I do because the truth is that the opportunity to raise the standard for your relationships, the opportunity to raise your own self-love support, 
and the Trinity to attract an amazing relationship so far better than you've ever had before is available to you. It's not some mystery. It's not soulmate stuff. It's, I talked about soulmates yesterday, so watch that broadcast, by the way. Um, it's more than that. So, so what I want to say? Ah, in case you haven't watched my broadcast before, I give homework. <laughs> if you're still watching, you're caught. You've got to do homework. No, the homework is this. If you have a chance to look back at your past relationships, if you're single at the moment, or if you're getting out of a bad relationship, or if you're in one that you want to get out of, look back and see the common threads. It will give you some clues of what you need to change. That's first step. Second thing also is if you, if you want to know how to be more loving with yourself, ask yourself the question, how can I love myself more? I'm putting this all in your hands. I'm not giving you any clues, any teachings. I'm saying this is your homework. Ask yourself how you can be more loving towards yourself now and then wait for an answer. Yeah, that's homework. <laughs> so that's something to play with. So both those two things. Again, looking back at your track record, see what's been working, what hasn't been working, and to love yourself more. But ask yourself how you can do that. That's a different spin from my usual one. Thanks for watching my broadcast, by the way. This is number 379 in an ongoing series of daily talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart on Facebook Live and also then on YouTube, so you'll be over there later. If you have any questions or comments about this, please put in the com in the comments below. I will answer them afterwards on either platform. Um, if you want help in this area and get some get unstuck and get some clues, I do offer a, a free complimentary clarity, a free free and complimentary same thing, a complimentary clarity conversation you can get from me. It's very easy to do um, to sign up for. It. You go to my website, which is my name BarrySelby.com, and click on Let's Chat, which is on the left hand side of the menu, and there you can sign up for the discovery session, get on my calendar. We can have a talk. 30 minutes of my time in service to you to get where you want to go. Um, yes, I do offer what I coach. If it lines up that we fit together, I will let you know how, how you work with me. But it's not a full sale. You get to choose in if you want to. And I think that's about it. Um, oh, these broadcasts. You can find these on my YouTube channel, um, which I'll actually put the link in the comments below afterwards for the playlist where all of these live. Um, they're also on my... Um, business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby author, all 378 plus this one, and also on my website, which is barryselby.com, again, under the video blog. So if you have any questions, comments, message me. If you want some help in this, reach out, get support. Don't keep trying to do it alone. You do have support out there, whether it's me or somebody else. You can get where you want to go with the right guidance. With that, thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. I'll back in tomorrow with something new and different. We'll see. That'll be 380, getting close to the 400. Um, as always, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.